Hey guys, welcome back to Beer, Bourbon, and Bullshit. We are doing a bit of a different thing than our normal uh, YouTube uploads. But we are having a few different beers from Dewey, if you couldn't tell by all the, the cool swag we have going on. Uh, we've got their Secret Machine uh, Mango Strawberry Lemon, their Pizzetta Pills. I'm not Italian, so I'm going to just assume that that's right. Waffle Cone Imperial Stout. And the, uh, the another secret of the machine, peach orange cran. Yeah, we're gonna. We figured they have. They actually have a whole sheet. They have a whole list. They got a bunch of beers they brought over. Ah. You know, the last episode we got we got to talk. Yep. The gar. And, and what we didn't want to do is make it seem like the only thing they did is just one. Pool just for one real, pool, yep. right? And so this we, this is about this is less than half of what they have to offer. Right. This is just a few things they brought here for a pint night. Yeah. And then more things. And we figured we're going to keep it short and have just a couple of of, of sips of everything. And I realize there's two secret machines here, but the reason one of them is very close, and we will we will rehash what they are as we touch it. Yes. But one's very close to the thrills. Yes. But it's a different kind of beer in this case, and, yep. and we're going to get to taste it. And then we also have a pills in the stout, which really just to make, does, yeah, it this, really right? cover the full spectrum at this point. So um, we're starting with which one are we starting? We're with starting again? with this one here on the left, which is the uh, Secret Machine Strawberry Lemon uh, Mango. Okay, so, so this is going to be kind of a little bit on the tartar side, I would guess, by comparison to what we're getting right at. I, I would say I, I am going to say cheers, cheers, and cheers, friends. I'm going to say this is going to be a little more on the sour side for real. Yeah, the lemon comes through on the nose. You know what? Mmm. It almost smells like a candy. Mm -hmm. It almost smells like a Jolly Rancher. That's the one, Jolly Rancher. I was yep. like, it, it's what is that? Yep. Not Starburst. It's a Jolly Rancher. It's a Jolly Rancher. It tastes like one too. Don't worry. Perfect. It's not super sour. That way. No, not super sour. A little bit tart on the end, which I think is the lemon coming through, which is nice. I, I enjoy it. That's my that's that's my stick. I like it. You know, this is tasty. Yeah. I think the lemon is what gives it a little bit of. It, it brings it. Ref, it brings it up a little bit. It, it elevates. Gives it a little it's kind of snappiness yeah. to it. That, that little crispiness to it. A little bit of drying to it. Also, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. the, <laughs> Excuse me, the strawberries there. Yes. Right? The mango. It's a bit of a backseat player, but you're also trying to compete with two stronger flavors like strawberry and lemon. Like I think the mango is more of a of a carrier for them. So they're they're yeah. writing. Yeah, nicer. that's fair. I'm not I'm not like I'm not testing a lot of real mango in it's, there. It's not it's not the it's not your it's not your feature, but it's definitely there to but, let you know. It's like it's the it's the plate that brings out the lemon and yeah, the strawberry. Yeah, yeah. Like I feel like without the mango, that this this strawberry and lemon aren't going to play the same way they are right now. Yeah, I, I think they're the balancers. A, right? good, a good mediator. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna finish these off camera, but we want to try and keep this to, short for you guys. That. So we're gonna we're gonna hop, skip, and jump. Where are we going? We're gonna go to the other secret machine. Whoa, we're gonna do them back to back. Yeah, we're gonna go back to back. Now, this, so this means this is actually, and I know this one, this is, oh, before I go any further, what is the ABV on this? Oh, so this first one here is uh, setting at 7%. So the secret machine, and, and, and uh, if you Gar had said If you saw our last episode, Gar posted up. So the secret machines hover about 7, yeah. seven ABV. But I will say, I will say this is a little more beery. Yeah, not for not that that word exists, but I'm going to say it now. And 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 maybe that seven percent helps that come through a little, mm. but you really don't taste the seven percent in here either, right? No. So I'm going to assume this this is the same, and I can already tell you this is going to be a peach orange, but there is an extra in this one, and that's probably because it's a secret machine. There's cranberry. In this yes. One. So, sir, to that little red fruit Cheers. from the gods. Yes. And this one is also at seven percent. It's also in their secret machine line. Follows the same path. But see, this one doesn't smell as Jolly Rancher. -y. It does not. It's more very subtle. This this one has a very very light fragrance to it. Mm. Nothing Which is surprising because you have some strong stuff in there. That's okay. I'm getting some of the. Oh wow. Bitterness from it. So this is this one is more of a sour. This one. This one's more in that wheelhouse, I think. And it's not a sourness, it's more of a bitterness. 
And that bitterness is actually coming from the cran- from the cranberry. Yeah, it's a cranberry. And the funny thing is, it's not the cranberry flavor's there, but it's not the head flavor. It's not the leading flavor, but you get the subtle bitterness what from it. You, what do you feel is the head flavor here? Because I find this weird, not weird, but interesting in comparison to the other beer, which is the Thrills, yeah. which is which is a fruit smoothie. Um, to me, I'm getting peach. Yeah, to me, with orange being like a subtle backseat. So peach is the driver, orange is the passenger. And the cranberry is the back seat. If we're gonna, yes, yeah, right. We're, we're, we're here. The mango is kind of like the car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here, they're all passengers, right? Oh, they're all me, passengers, but you have one in charge, and you have one who's peach, like the peach is kicking right here. And the thing is, to me, and here's the joy of beers: yeah. not everybody's palate's exactly the same. To me, I have the peach driving. The cranberry hitting up the tunes and an orange sacked out in the back. Hmm. That's how I, that's how I'm tasting. But you know what? I so yeah, see the cranberry packs. He passes out snacks. Yeah. Uh, he, so he's the one who's really keeping everybody in line by being in the back seat. We're referencing the the, the essential three person car pack. Of, a, of, what a, of what responsibilities are for each people in the car. Yeah. For all you people that do road trips, you know what you we're know. talking about. Um, <laughs> and we do plenty of road trips, so we definitely have this done yeah. already. But this um, is, that's, that, so that's where we would differ. We, we would flip-flop where the cranberry and where the, the, orange, uh, the, set. the orange set. I, I'm, I'm a cranberry fan. I do cranberry mm. um, when it comes to season. Yes. I, I, I am notorious, especially at the house, to have like – cranberry and vodka just because it's it's the season four it's the only time i do it but i do cranberry throughout the year as a juice as a oh, yeah as a juice 100 right um this does not taste like cranberry juice it does not at all it, it lets you actually taste cranberry but not cranberry juice it doesn't have that cranberry juice gives you which i love and it doesn't have that sticky smooth that sticky sweetness that when you overdo it to make it palatable it's just what cranberry should be yeah actually I dig this. That is good. So far, I dig both of them. He's, you know what? I'm going to let him pick the next one, and I'll pick the last one. Wow. That's rough. <laughs> where should we go, Bernie? <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm picking. Did you get to pick? Don't ask me. I know where we're going to go next. Uh, we are going to go with the pills. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> we had I, no, I, I, I knew that for a reason. I went that in, in a random uh, pattern anyway, so we had we actually didn't discuss that before. No, but there, but I, I will let you know why I thought what is happening happened. Uh, yeah. So this is a pills. This yes, is, it's a it's an Italian pills. Straight up, there you go. You can see the bubbles. You can see through it. It's a very light amber color. It tastes like a pills. It tastes so like a pills. It smells like one. Tastes like one. That is. It must be one. Looks like, smells like, tastes like. It's a pills. It is. It's a pills. It's a. Um, hmm. There's something there. I don't know if it's. I know it's got a funky name to it that you're you're making me think Italian, and I wish I would have asked him if this is supposed to be uh, closer to a, a reminiscent of an Italian pills. I believe it is, from what I from what I understand. Um, if it, when it comes to pills, I think my favorites are Czech pills. Okay. Uh, I've I, I haven't had a chance to have very many Italian pills. I can't say I have either. But the few I've had, I I, I won't say they're turnoffs, but they're not they're not the kind of flavor profile that makes me run out to have another one. There's always something a little funky about them. And when I say this, if you've ever had a regular pills and then you had a Vienna lager, yep. and I understand I'm going, pills, lager, but yeah. keep in mind, pills and lagers aren't far removed. Um, and if you want to play it that way, a lager and then a Vienna lager. The Vienna's going to be darker. Yep. It's got more malt to it. It's a little maltier. It's got a little more depth to it, right? The way that happens, I think an Italian has something different to it, too. It doesn't change the profile. I like the color. But the flavor is a little, it's always a little off. In this particular instance, I don't find it as 
as off-putting as others have made. This one is one that if you like pills, you'll like it. And if you if you dig something with a little more something to the pills, but not where you're going, oh my god, it's this some point healthy oh, thing. Yeah, no, because this thing is only five percent. It's five percent. It's a pills with a little, a, a little. I can't put my finger on a it. little something on the end. Just a little, just a little something to let you know you're drinking something that's not. One of those. I don't want to say not normal, but more unique. Yes, I, and I like that. I, I dig it. Yes. This is a good beer that when you're done cutting the yard and you need that, Perfect. you're hot, you need that quick, just give me a beer. This is one of those. Heck, a Pilsner in general is a great beer for that. Well, that, and that's what I'm saying. This is a good, it yeah, fits, it, 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 it fits it, that wheelhouse where you're like, I want, I want something I can just it's very, it's very, It's very stereotypical kind of beer in that regard. It is, a it, but it's a Pils. It's a yeah. Pils in general. Yeah. Uh, because it's what it is. It's got a little something to it that I can't make out. That's kind of why I went with this one before we, we go with the stout to finish. This is basically a palate cleanser from the last two. <laughs> Pretty much. At least it acts as one. So uh, the reason I knew we were going down the path that we are is this is a stout. The name of this stout, sir, is? The Waffle Cone Imperial Stout. <gasps> oh, wait. I heard the word. AB, I mean, Imperial. <laughs> it is a 11%. Yeah. This is gonna be good. So I've never had it. No, I've neither of us have ever, neither of us have had Imperial. Actually, I don't think have you had any of these. I have not had any okay. of these at all tonight nope. because they just popped for tonight's thing. I've yep. had others, but none of these. Correct. Uh, including the first one we had in a can from the last episode, which you should watch this. It's an awesome beer. Uh, I will it. say, just the words, Waffle House makes me think potential maple. <laughs> Yeah. After that, <laughs> Imperial, I already know it's eleven percent. Yep. So if you if you ever just listen to the verbiage of what the beer is, you can sometimes get a feel for what you're getting yourself into. Yeah, yeah depending on how it's named, you can definitely kind of get a grasp as to what to So what I you should be tasting bacon and eggs in this one. Sir. Uh, cheers. Cheers. And to you and eggs. great folks too. You did hear Cheers to you guys. Now. Thank you. Ooh. Oh, you know what's really cool is the the, fl- the the smell is there, but it's subtle. It's not heavy in your yeah, face like some eleven uh-huh. percent or Which would be, Well, not even that. Like even the maple is subtly there. Very subtle. I'm gonna let you run with this one first before I do. It's not what I'm expecting from the name at all. I get it. <laughs> that's, I'm getting that's, it. That's interesting. I feel like I'm having a maple dipped waffle cone. That was so before you go further. When I said what I did earlier, one of the expectations of it is the sweetness because of the maple that sweetness isn't it's it, it, they're sweet here don't get me wrong but it's not that sticky sweet right it's it's to the level of what maple sweet is right it's not over because, uh, okay be honest we've had stats where it's so oh it's stupid it's stupid sticky sweet right yeah. this is not that it is not that but it, it rides it, that line real close <laughs> it is the sweet you'd expect in a maple but yeah. not more right no and that's and the thing that's, is though, that's accurate but it's, it's just i expected nothing but the maple i thought waffle cone was just part of the shtick yeah well, it's because not. you know it's not like it's not like a super sweet like sugar cone or whatever no so this maple cone, it has some it has some like body to it like this has some body to it I'm getting a much. I'm getting a lot of maple. I, so and that's it to me. That's the maple flavor. Again, my opinion is overriding the rest of the beer. To where that's where like it's overpowering the beer with maple. This is really cool because me and him have opposing thoughts on, on more than one beer here. Yeah. To me, you can taste the maple. I'm torn between who's heavier, the waffle cone, and here's the secret. 
Okay. It doesn't taste like a waffle. No, waffle it's literally like a waffle cone. All right, so I will give you for the first half. So when you first sip it, to the point where it goes down, waffle cone, hundred percent. Yeah. After the waffle cone, the goes, maple takes the over. maple takes over, and it like here's your waffle cone level flavor. Here's your maple level flavor on the finish. Yes. And it just hovers and holds like like a sticky maple syrup would. It holds. <laughs> it is. It, it is there to the point um, where I would probably only have this five percent pour or this five ounce pour of it. There are some, there are some beers out there that are one and done, and there are one and done's for many reasons. And yeah. one and done's are not bad beers. Some of no, they're not. Actually, most one and done's that I know are some of the best, best beers, beers you could ever get. Yeah, the reason they're one and done's is because there is an overpowering element that just gets you to the point that when you're done with it, you're like, oh I'm my done. god, I'm, I'm really I've had so much yeah. of it, I can't have more. That's not a bad thing. Actually, most of the time, it's a good it's thing. It's a good thing. I'm actually getting what I want out yep. of it, right? This one is just a bit much for me. He, I am. Um, personally. I, you know what? I find this beer, I find it intriguing. I dig it. I do. This is, I've had a lot of, and you have to understand, folks, we and we talk here and there about backgrounds from each other and everything, right? Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I I come from a stout world to start with. Oh, and I did too. Like when you said you were talking with, with Gar, like you start with Guinness. And Guinness was my opening door to craft beer. Right. And that. that I, and and, and I, I've done. I, so this, this is my, I've this, this style is like my wheelhouse. It was like my home. It's my starting point. Right. And, and this. See, okay. Here's cool. The, the longer it sits, the more that maple yep. sits. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you something. The waffle cone. And it's waffle cone. Yes. No, it's, right? not, it's not a waffle. But the thing is, as you sit here and, you, and, and we talk, I'm getting the maple. But with the maple, it's almost starting to. And it's because of the waffle cone side. I'm almost getting like maple on pancake. Feel and it's coming because the waffle cone is fading. Yeah. So it's it, you're in that you're in that limbo it, it, zone. It's that little bit left, and it's just enough to make it seem like the maple's being used on something, yeah. right? It's not straight maple. Yeah. It's kind of funky. Um, I would be half interested in doing something fully stupid, which is in 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 in, in this pour, drop maybe a quarter ounce of a of a bacon whiskey into it, and then you got breakfast. And I'm not going anywhere with the verbiage on that for anyone that thinks I'm being funny. Can we try it? I don't have one around, so I can't. We know a guy. I don't think they have bacon here. Bacon whiskey. So, we checked. No bacon whiskey. Maybe next time. <laughs> no, bre- no, no, no breakfast imperial stuff today. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, overall, great beers. They, they uh, are. There is, again, I would easily drink all of these. This is not my favorite, but again, it's just my personal preference, but it's still a great beer. No, no, it's... Pilsner is a solid pills, my idea, and Secret Machines, both are phenomenal. Again, but I am a... I, I'm, I, I got a soft spot for the Secret Machine line, and well, like I said in the last video, it, it's pretty solid. I will say that this beer here... Um, is a dangerous beer. It, it will make your it will make your palate kind of figure out what's going on with light. Yeah. And you know you're playing in the maple. You're playing in the breakfast world, right? Oh yeah. Or not even really breakfast, almost dessert because it's a waffle cone. Right? Sure. Yeah. It's eleven percent. You, you can ride that line on either side of the spectrum, whether you're going for dessert, whether you're going for breakfast. It's eleven percent. Yeah. Having it, it's. It's not a beer where you walk up to the bar, order a 12 ounce, and then order another one, yeah. and then another one, because that's... Like I said, this, this is a one-and-done kind of beer. This is this is a beer that you're going to know. And again, that's drinking. not saying anything bad about the beer. No, or it's a it, good beer. Is, I like the beer, yeah. but again, I like it because it's got not the stupid, super stickiness to it. It's got just 
regular stickiness to it, which is what the maple should be. Yep. The, the waffle cone comes through as a waffle cone. Oh, yeah, 100%. The, the, on that. One, the one thing you have to realize is if you sit there and analyze it and you hang out and you, you, be, you, you mulch it for a little bit. Yep. Um, the waffle starts losing its it, it, its its play, right? Mm -hmm. It fades out, and the maple really steps up. Oh, yeah. And as it does that, you get a little bit for for a few seconds. You almost get that. Hey, I have maple on something, and you're almost thinking pancake. And I think maybe it's because the waffle is that kind of flavor profile, right? And you're used to a lot of people used to maple on pancakes, right? right? It's a common, and I think you get that little zone, that limbo zone. Yeah. That that flavor hits, and then all of a sudden it's gone, and you get nothing but maple. Yep. If you're into maple, if you're Canadian, if you live in the New England area, <laughs> you will love it. Um, <laughs> if, if you're if you're into intrigue, yeah. you'll love it because yeah. let's be honest. I know it's not your wheelhouse, right? right. But let's let let let's put the questions this way: Do you find it complex? Oh, 100 percent. Do you find it a little bit of a roller coaster ride with the flavors? Oh, and that's why I said, like, it is definitely like you start off with one, you build up, and like, okay, cool, something else kind of kicks in, it overdrive, and it's just like it owns it, like it owns every every step of what this beer would be imagined to taste like. Yeah, it tastes like now. And do you feel? And there are some beers that will do this, where somewhere in the first sip. To I'm better put the first sip to two minutes after I'm done. Yep. Right. Sometimes beers have a tendency to get a little funky. You get a flavor in there. You're like, oh, I don't know if I like that. Yeah. Do you find that happening here? Well, because I'm not the biggest like maple fan. But does the maple go bad oh, on you? No. Right. I understand you don't like maple, but it stays maple. It does stay maple. See, and that's that's where I'm going with. Oh, okay. Sorry, I misunderstood. I, I, I'm, no. I'm, I'm, I'm being biased about it. I, he, okay, he's not loving the maple part of it, but the maple doesn't go bad. It doesn't, no, no, it doesn't, it doesn't go rancid. It doesn't no, go weird. No, it stays to what it is. It stays true to that, but it does. It doesn't stay flat. It it does have some ebbs and flows in the beer flavor, or you know, with what you're with what you're getting initially. You're gonna change it, and it's gonna it's gonna coast. It coasts. The more I drink it, the more I actually like it, which is. It's, it's, that's the only good things about to say the beer. That's I mean, it, it, it's a great beer. It yeah. is. I, I dig it. It's it's not your average imperial. Nope. You do have to. I will warn you now. Like I said earlier, you're either a lumberjack, you're Canadian, you're from New England. You have to really like maple yeah. because if you don't like maple, you won't like it. I don't. I don't think you. I don't think you can wrap your 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 flavor profile around this to make it survivable. Yeah. It is there. It is really there. Oh yeah, and it lets you know. Yeah, and and that's not ne nothing negative. Because yeah. dude, shout out to Dewey for making some phenomenal beers. It is, it, it's that good. And for this being a small selection as to what they have on their taps year round or available year round, just here tonight, just for a limited appearance, that long. There is eleven different beers. Ten on tap, and the one can for we had in the last episode of Gar. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. A ten tap tape uh, takeover for Frisco's is that's heavy. It's heavy. That's heavy. And that, it, that hasn't happened for a long. time. No, but time. with someone as 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 great a quality beer as Dewey has, that only says more great things about Dewey. That they're going to devote a significant fraction of their beer lines and taps to one brewery. It says a lot about Dewey and the, the good relationship that they have with, with what uh, they built over the years. It does. It does. It it, it is. It's super cool. It, yeah. it, it it goes to the like if if you go back a few episodes, we talked to Avery and Avery's a larger brewer, yeah. right? And and we try to find good ways to say that they're 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 national. They're they're big. Yep. They're not the big blue box dude, but they're big. But the thing is, they're, they're still they're definitely all big in the craft world. They're still that's just it, right? Once upon a time they were a little local guy and they grew up and they kept their local roots. Which is awesome. Do we and for us, you have to understand for Avery fans that live in the the, the Denver area and Colorado area, you're awesome. 
But for us, we have Dewey, and yep. Dewey is not the little local guy. They're the big local guy. Right. And but they they are still so humble at their roots. They still Ruined act through. like little guys. Ruined through. They are holding true to that. And I, I, um, you can applaud them for that. And, and and huge shout out to them. Super cool. Uh, Gar, thank you so much for your time. And I'll say, and the entire yeah, and the entire Dewey beer team. Awesome. Keep it up the great work. We will go out to Dewey. We're gonna and, come give uh, you guys a visit for sure. We're we're gonna try to actually get with Gar and find like a really good something happening kind of thing. So yeah. We can really make it worthwhile for you guys. Yeah, man, absolutely. And other than that, I'm gonna love the last leash, and I have a game to watch. Yes. You have a life to live, a beer to drink, and an enjoy it, sir. Guys, thank you so much. Check us out. Oh. Follow us. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Cheers, guys. Cheers.